Hello all, this is Dr. Neeraj Masapu. I'm a senior consultant in the field of neuroanesthesiology. And uh, today we have Dr. Chaitra with us. And uh, she is a senior clinical fellow in pediatric rheumatology department in Bristol uh, Children's Hospital in UK. Welcome to the channel, Dr. Chaitra. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So agenda of this particular video is that we are going to talk about MRCPCH examination. And uh, before going to that, we would want to know your uh, story, your journey from India to UK as a pediatrician. Yeah, sure. Um, first of all, thank you so much. Uh, I've known you for a long time, being my inspiration guru. <laughs> Since the beginning, I've been as a student and I'm very much happy that I'm able to share my journey on this platform with you. So, uh, yeah, so I finished my postgraduate uh, training in pediatrics in uh, India and then I was working as a senior resident in St. John's Medical College during which uh, I thought I need to do something further. That's when I thought uh, why don't I give MRCPCH steps and see if this would be helpful for me to gain some international experience especially in any of the subspecialties which I was interested back then. So that's when I started uh, analyzing getting more information about the uh, MRCPCH on online uh, actually it was more helpful that the rcpch website itself gave me lots of information so through that i started my journey gave all the steps cleared it in india itself and then got myself registered and subsequently i started applying to the uh, jobs in uk and then I got selected to one of the general pediatric job at a registrar level in one of the district general hospitals in Luton. And then uh, once I gained around six months of experience there, I was pretty much confident that now I can move ahead and start applying for the subspecialty jobs. And then uh, since my interest area of interest was pediatric rheumatology, I applied to various uh, hospitals and then finally I'm here now. Uh, it's been almost eight months uh, into pediatric rheumatology and having an amazing experience, having great time learning. Yeah. So then we'll uh, directly, your journey is awesome. So John's to Bristol directly. And yeah. uh, the next part is, next part of our interview is the MRCPCH. What is the advantage for a person in India uh, doing this MRCPCH in his career? Yeah. Sure. So uh, when I started, I really didn't have that much of knowledge what I have now. So uh, to begin with, uh, MRCPCH is the membership of Royal College of Pediatric and Child Health, which is the uh, equivalent postgraduate training uh, degree here. So uh, uh, to simplify it, uh, MBBS student over here who has finished the med school would want to do pediatric training undergoes a pediatric training for eight years which is from st1 to st8 and at the end of it they should be able to have this mrcpch degree and they complete a, a examination called certificate examination called cct post which they'll be a consultant over here so the advantage of other uh, country candidates is that they will be able to take this exam without getting trained over here and have the degree to their name now, uh, to say that it's not recognized in India, but why should we give it? There are definitely few benefits. Mainly, I would say is strengthening your core basic pediatric knowledge. Uh, definitely uh, knowing the international guidelines, how they manage various pediatric conditions would be more helpful for you. Uh, so it will definitely uh, widen your knowledge in the basic pediatrics. Second thing is, Probably in the corporate setup, we all know that corporate uh, setup mainly follows the international guidelines. So when you're interested after your postgraduate training that you want to get into a corporate uh, world and work there as a consultant, having this degree additional to your postgraduate training would give you probably a bit more uh, money as well as recognition that uh, you have an uh, edge over the other candidates who doesn't have them. Uh, the third thing would be that suppose in the future you would want to get uh, an opportunity to come to UK and work here, you will definitely have an upper edge as compared to those who don't have, considering that uh, anyone who's interviewing you 
would want you to know how UK system works, how NHS works. So giving this exam would make them feel confident that you know how NHS works and probably you will be an ideal candidate to work over here. So I think these are a few of many advantages that I would name uh, that people should be knowing. So ultimate, so many advantages, sir. It is really worth, I think, yeah. uh, tracking this exam. And yeah. uh, then uh, what is the eligibility criteria for this exam? Yeah, so so uh, yeah, many have asked me whether uh, should you really have who have just passed their med school or MBBS back home can still give the exam. But uh, with who it would be good if you have some pediatric exposure or experience back home so that you exactly know what you're doing when you're giving the theory exams. Uh, the eligibility to start off giving the theory exams is very simple. You need to have is your med school degree certificate which you need to just upload on the website by creating an account on the rcpch website and once they verify saying that you have mbbs or the postgraduate medical qualification degree uh, you should be able to start taking the theory uh, to the theory part of the mrcpch which consists of, of three parts uh, it usually happens around uh, three times in each year so considering the uh, FOP or the task that is the foundation of practice or theory and science which happens around Feb, June, October whereas the applied knowledge of practice happens in January, May, September so all often go to the website and keep checking uh, so that they'll release the dates and you should be able to register for the same. So basically, uh, is it a, how to register? Just go there, register, or is is that is there a fixed time slots where you you can you have to register that? Yeah, so that's a very quick question. So uh, it's very time critical, I would say. Uh, so uh, once you have opened the account uh, at the RCPCH and you've got verified, uh, you should be able to navigate through the web page, which gives you the timeline of uh, when the applications will be open for each uh, part of the exam. And it would be a window period of anything between three to four days uh, uh, around a couple of months prior to the exam date. Uh, so you should be really uh, uh, know that when to go log in and register, considering that as soon as the uh, window period opens, people will be just waiting to yeah. book and within probably 10 to 15 minutes, all the slots will be open, so, uh, closed. So it's very, very time critical and you should be extremely on your toes to make sure that you get the slot. So uh, yeah, that's how it goes. Oh. Then see, even if somebody wants to write, uh, so uh, even if somebody wants to write, if he, if he misses that slot, then he should wait for another one year or some uh, three more months or something like that. Yeah, three more. Since there are three diets in each year, if you have missed this saying that the, all the slots are over, you need to just, they would have already uh, uh, probably announced when is the next application dates open. So you need to be just on that time because they would have all usually mentioned in the UK local time. You need to just confirm that uh, that you are aware that you convert it to the Indian standard time and right. just be there in front of the computer and waiting for them to open the slots and immediately book it in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Otherwise, there's high chances we are going to miss the slot. I think it's better to devise some AI software tool which can do the booking for you. I think that's something that you should look into and you should you are the only person who can do that, sir. <laughs> so that, now we'll go into details of uh, the actual details of all the theory exams and how many parts are there and like all that, if you can tell us. Yeah, sure. So be before that, just to touch on where and, where and all we can take the exam is it just uk or we can we take it in any other different countries can we take it from india as well so as i said i took all the theory as well as the clinical uh, step in india so uh, uh, it's very much more advantage because you don't need to travel you don't need to spend however the cost which we are going to speak later is a bit more higher in india considering all the logistics that they, they need to take care of while conducting the exam but it's a bit more easier because you're more uh, 
uh, aware of the surroundings and the local examination center so it's a bit more easier to attend the exams but you can take it in uk and there are a couple of more other countries like uh, kuwait malaysia pakistan <laughs> qatar singapore uh, saudi lots of other countries apart from india you can take it in uk as well super yeah so uh, now we'll discuss about the uh, different parts of theory so you can please go on chaitra and discuss about different parts yeah yeah sure so uh, theory parts of mrcpch includes three sub parts i would say so uh, wherein two of them can be taken either separately or together and one which needs to be taken on a different day uh, so the first one is the theory and science which basically deals with the basic science physiology pharmacology of the uh, core pediatric knowledge whereas the foundation of practice uh, which deals with the clinical part of basic uh, pediatric knowledge in terms of development growth vaccination and the clinical scenario related to them and the last part is the applied knowledge of practice uh, which deals with mainly more of sub specialities and the ethical dilemmas that ha can happen in uk and with regards to the medical legal aspects and all the laws with re uh, related to the child act is something that we need to be aware of these are the ones that will be covered in this part uh, so how do we go about uh, giving this exams either you can take all three of them on separate sessions uh, or the foundation of practice and theory of science can be taken on the same day and the applied uh, knowledge of practice it needs to be taken at a separate session because it is uh, in, involves two sessions in itself morning and afternoon so breaking down each one uh, in the foundation of practice and theory and science each one lasts for around 2 hours and each has around 100 questions in each uh, of them whereas the applied knowledge of practice will have a morning and afternoon session wherein you will have 60 questions in each session uh, which is best of 5 and then in applied of knowledge you have even what we call as extended questions where they'll have three clinical scenarios for which there will be at least eight to ten sub um, uh, choices among which you need to choose the best two to three whatever they're going to ask that is appropriate for that clinical scenario so this is with regards to the theory uh, parts uh, coming to uh, where to get the so sorry. one question is there can we finish all the theory parts in one session uh, as in, uh, you can take theory and science and uh, foundation of practice on the same day, uh, morning one session and afternoon, but uh, applied knowledge of practice, since it has a morning and afternoon session, you need to take it on a different day. But in one, two days, we can finish up all the parts then. Yeah, but, but since the sessions happen at different parts of the year, you can't have them combined on two separate days because usually as i said the akp and uh, the tof uh, the tas happens in the months of feb june october whereas the uh, akp happens in jan may and september so it is at different parts of the year so you should you won't be able to take it and uh, consecutively on two different days it happens on two different sessions okay got it so what is the passing criteria for this theory exam yeah. Yeah, so unlike most of the Indian exams where we say 50% is the passing criteria, it's more like a relative percentile kind. What we, they define it as is um, called as criterion referencing, where they have a criteria to pass which differs from each session. Uh, just like how we have our NEAT PG and NEAT SS where uh, it is a relative uh, percentile based on how others have performed it is similar to that where the passing criteria differs when i had given uh, in terms of the fop and tas it was anywhere uh, the passing was around 55 to 60 percent of the total marks uh, when coming to akp it's the same around 55 to 57 percent but having said that this will differ from each session based on the difficulty level of the exam and how others have performed and it's a bit more different and it is fixed for clinicals, which we'll discuss later. Got it. Super. What is the cost for writing this uh, theory examination? 
Yes, uh, so that's something that uh, we need to be aware of and uh, definitely differs where we are giving the exam. So having uh, said that first to focus on if we are giving the exam in India, it's definitely more expensive as compared to what it is in UK because of the way it needs to be conducted uh, by the RCPCH. Uh, so in India, anywhere the FOP and TAS, if we are going to give it individually, it might cost anywhere between 450 to 460 pounds. Whereas if we are able to give it together on the same day, it will be a bit lesser. It will cost around 780 pounds as of now, what they have updated uh, recently on the website. Whereas the AKP, since it in involves two sessions which are given on the same day, it, it costs anywhere between 850 to 900 pounds to be paid. Uh, it, this is in comparison to UK, it's much cheaper where uh, uh, FOP and TAS, you will be able to give it in 365 pounds and uh, together around three, 630 pounds, 